And welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides, live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. It's time to look at emerging markets in a way that you may not have thought about. This is a different perspective, and it's my pleasure to bring in David Mullings, chairman and CEO of Blue Maho Capital. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So we're looking at emerging markets in a new way. I don't think that people think of the Caribbean necessarily right away when we say emerging markets. Is that correct? What are you bringing us today? No, that is correct. Well, I'm trying to get us to get more people to be excited about investing in the Caribbean and recognizing that essentially we have four Caribbean tigers, like how we had the Asian tigers in the past. A lot of people vacation in the Caribbean. So the thing about sun, sea, and sand, maybe some music, maybe bobsledding, but there is a lot of money to be made in the region. How so? I mean, how long has this been evolving? I mean, you've had to put together projects to, to really put together the numbers, the dollars, the cents. We just heard Kevin O'Leary talking about cash flow. People want to know why the Caribbean? What is it that, where can they make money? No, I love that. So the way I look at it is, you know, working close with Michael Leachin, a Jamaican Canadian billionaire, he would say you need to look for three things to get you excited about a region or an industry. Number one, the perception should be different from reality. Uh, so people tend to think the Caribbean, small islands, small returns. And number two, there needs to be a lack of equity capital flowing in. We have a lot of debt capital, but not as much equity capital. So your money gets hugged and loved when you bring equity capital. And then lastly is access. Uh, you need to see an opportunity where people are going to be moving from inefficiency towards efficiency, so they need access. So we think there's opportunity around financial services as incomes keep growing. You look at Guyana's per capita income has tripled in three years. And Jamaica's brought their debt to GDP ratio down from 144% 10 years ago to 72% today. So there's capital that's being invested in infrastructure, in healthcare, in IT, and we see major opportunities there. And obviously everybody thinks about agriculture and tourism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, the lack of equity capital flowing in, the, if there's more coming in, you could do so much more. You're talking about GDP and seeing that improvement um, in the likes of Jamaica, one of my favorite places on the planet, I will make that known. But when you compare it to 20 years ago, the, the evolution, tell me a little bit more about the money and how it goes in. Is it more for things like infrastructure? And, 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 you know, and sometimes you watch the skyline and you think, oh, I'm in Dubai. I'm not in the Caribbean anymore, right? I mean, you're seeing things evolve. You see the cranes. You land in Kingston, Jamaica, you see all of the cranes, you go to Barbados, it's infrastructure, Bahamas, and obviously Guyana uh, with their oil discovery. I think it's important though to step back. Uh, we know about the Chinese investing in infrastructure. We know about the Spanish who are building hotels in the region. You look at Sandals Resorts, which is local. That's a homegrown company that's investing across the Caribbean. Uh, well, we in the diaspora, we Caribbean members of the diaspora, we want to invest back home, but we don't have an easy way. Uh, the Jamaica Stock Exchange was the best performing stock exchange in the whole world for five years up until 2019, according to Bloomberg. But there's no ETF, there's no mutual fund. So how do you get the exposure? So that's what Blue Moho Capital is yeah. focused on. And there on are not as many hurdles as people think. I mean, it's more capital friendly, right? Tell me about that. Extremely capital friendly. I tell everyone, before you invest overseas, the most important question to ask is how do you get back? Your money. It's easy to put US dollars into a country. How hard is it to get your money out? And so when you look at a country like Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados, Ghana, they are capital friendly. You look at Barbados and Bahamas in particular, they have fixed exchange rates, so you don't have to worry about the fluctuation. Uh, Jamaicans, the dollar has been fairly stable for the last few years, something uh, someone bought in 1981. I was not used to seeing that. So, you know, credit to both political parties for being very fiscally responsible. At this point, we don't, I don't believe we have any Jamaican companies listed here at the New York Stock Exchange. But you foresee that happening, right? The evolution of growth, these Caribbean companies that will grow and you're comparing it to something like India. Tell me about that. Yeah, so if you look at India 20, 25 years ago, they were going through this, what we call a golden window. And it happened with, with the four Asian tigers in the past as well. You know, foreign direct investment comes into the country, they liberalize their economies, the government starts to privatize certain publicly owned companies that may not have been run so well. And so private equity can come in and take that. Family-owned businesses are starting to list, and so that gives a regular person an access now to wealth creating opportunities. The brands that we all know and love, you know, the Jamaican brands are being sold in Walmart right now, for example. But we can't buy their stock unless we buy in Jamaica or in Trinidad or Barbados. 
And so some of them are looking to cross list here. You know, we are very excited about NCB Financial Group, one of the largest you know, banking conglomerates in the Caribbean that is run by Michael Leachin. They're doing an additional public offering right now in Jamaica that opened on Monday and closed on the 26th. Yeah, they would love to cross-list. They've been talking about it. But it was so funny. When they did the roadshow to cross-list on the New York Stock Exchange, they were told, good house, bad neighborhood, because Jamaica was going through an IMF deal. Uh, now today, if you look at it, people are going to say, good house, great neighborhood. <laughs> and these are undervalued companies. So when a company is raising capital at price to book of one, a PB of one, massive opportunity. So we see a great opportunity to create a vehicle that's listed here in the U.S. and gives retail investors access to these great companies in the region. Well said. You know, we also think about how things move in and out, and you talk about transshipment hubs, exports as well. Tell me more about that story. It's important. When you look at how economies have grown in the past, developing countries, especially those four Asian tigers, Singapore, we need to think about South Korea. You look at the Celtic tiger. These were typically export-led. So they had foreign direct investment coming in. We are focused on diaspora direct investment, so DDI instead of FDI. Uh, diaspora yeah. capital is more patient because the foreign money that went into South Korea, for example, or the Philippines or Malaysia, uh, when they had issues down there, they mean they ran away and caused the Asian financial crisis. So diaspora capital is more patient. So we won't run away just at the first sign of a hurricane, for example. But it's important to understand, export-led growth is crucial to the development of emerging markets because uh, you can build something, whether it's services or products, within that country and then ship it out to the world. And thanks to the internet now, and hopefully COVID has taught all of us that remote work is a real thing, you can actually be globally competitive, and provided you choose to be globally competitive in terms of customer service and delivery, and then you can sell to the world without ever leaving. And how do people get involved with this? I mean, they can reach out to you at Blue Maho Capital, of course, David. Um, any other ways to sort of get it started on this if, well, they, well, if you, they find what you're saying interesting yeah. well, today? Well, the, the easiest one is to go to www.islandforward.com. Uh, we have a Reg CF offering that's been qualified by the SEC now. And so investors in the U.S. who want to get involved, and they don't have to be accredited, can buy $10 a share, 500 minimum and benefit from what we're doing. We're starting with doing affordable housing in the Caribbean, Jamaica and Barbados to start. And we think there's a huge opportunity in that space as, as housing is required. But secondly, you can reach out to the you know, Jamaica Stock Exchange, a broker. I'm willing to put you in touch with NCB Capital Markets. Right. You open an account and you can buy directly uh, in Jamaica. And you think about the, the diasporas you're talking yeah. about and the unity among these Caribbean countries. When it comes time, they are one. They are I one. I know they are separate, but they are one. And I mean, Adam Stewart and his dad, Butch, Butch. I remember because I met them both mm -hmm. a long time ago. Um, you know, they're part of the Sandals. They own yeah. Sandals yeah. and Beach but also so much philanthropy, so much. not only in Jamaica, but also All over around the, region, the Caribbean. Yeah. So, so and Adam this is how this is works. Amazing. Yeah, it's where it works. And so yeah. Adam, Adam and I went to high school. And what Adam would say is that you know, find what people want and then deliver it to them. And then by so doing, exceed expectations. So we're doing the same thing. We in the diaspora want to invest back home. Right. We need a vehicle that's, that's regulated, that's transparent and liquid. David, it's nice to see you. Thank you. You can say hello to Adam from me. I will. It's great to see you. David Mullings, Blue Maho Capital. Thank you very much.